There is no more road left. The stakes could not be higher. The urgency is now. 24 years of half measures and failed talks is enough. Kim Jong-un's action cannot be seen as defensive and his nuclear threats show that he is begging for war. Very tough talk from Nikki Haley today on this Labor Day, an emergency session at the UN here in New York. There is no time to waste, as she said. North Korea's now sixth nuclear test, a clear UN violation, and a truly frightening escalation. An underground hydrogen bomb five to ten times bigger than the weapon dropped on Hiroshima. Just think about that for a moment. And now a threat that they're getting ready to launch another missile. So we have lots of analysis on all this tonight and regime supporters speaking out in Pyongyang. Watch this interesting soundbite. We will smash any kind of sanctions because we have single-hearted unity and the great power of self-development. If the U.S. imperialists try to play around with us, we will wipe them out. So they have that going for him. Chief National Correspondent Ed Henry here now on how the White House is responding to all of this. Boy. Busy Martha, weekend. No, no time to relax That's on right. this one. You think about how much hate President Trump has taken from Democrats, dating back to day one of this administration, charging he's not up to the job of commander in chief. And yet over the last 24 to 48 hours, from Defense Secretary James Mattis in the White House driveway yesterday to U.S. Ambassador Nikki Haley today at the U.N., as you noted, the world has seen a calm and cool Trump administration taking charge of this crisis after the president convened his national security team at the White House Sunday. Earlier yesterday, he had been tweeting specifically about putting the onus on China. The president tweeting, among other things, quote, North Korea is a rogue nation which has become a great threat and embarrassment to China, which is trying to help but with little success. He added later, the U.S. is considering, in addition to other options, stopping all trade with any country doing business with North Korea. That largely aimed at China. Then today, the president carefully working the phones, first talking to German Chancellor Angela Merkel, the White House saying, quote, President Trump noted that this latest provocation only serves to increase the international community's resolve to counter North Korea's prohibited activities. All options to address the North Korean threat are on the table. The president also spoke with the president of South Korea. The White House declaring about that call, quote, the two leaders agreed to maximize pressure on North Korea using all means at their disposal, adding, interestingly, President Trump also provided his conceptual approval for the purchase of many billions of dollars worth of military weapons and equipment from the U.S. by South Korea. That, too, aimed at China, that specific military buildup, not just at North Korea, but it rankles China. And it came after some tough talk by two of the president's top advisors. Enough is enough. We have taken an incremental approach, and despite the best of intentions, it has not worked. King Jong-un should take heed of the United Nations Security Council's unified voice. We are not looking to the total annihilation of a country, namely North Korea. But as I said, we have many options to do so. Now, you can see what they're trying to do is exhaust those options. First, the diplomatic ones, Martha, then turn potentially the military ones because they're concerned with these ICBMs that could have small nuclear weapons on them. If North Korea gets to the point of no return where they have this capability, um, we have to make sure we have the defenses to try to shoot it down. But diplomacy is only going to go so far if, in fact, they have this capability. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the threat of ending all trade with China is a one. Uh, could boom. Uh, yeah, most likely. But um, we'll see where it goes from here, Ed. Thank you very see. much. Good to see you, too. So here with me now, Laura Rosenberger, the former NSC director for China and Korea, Mike Chinoy, a non-resident senior fellow of the U.S.-China Institute at, the US, at USC, and General Anthony Tata, a former brigadier general in the United States Army and a former deputy commanding general of U.S. forces in Afghanistan. A great team to go through this with us tonight. Thank you all for being here. Um, Mike, let me start with you on this. Let, let's take a look at this map, because there's a reason that this latest explosion has really caught everyone's everyone's attention. Um, it, it's going to be coming up in just a moment. Uh, so, so there's a look at Guam, and then you can see uh, the capacity to potentially hit the United States with one of these. What is so disturbing about this missile test over the weekend? Well, this missile test, uh, this nuclear test uh, was larger than any that the North Koreans have previously uh, conducted. And I think what it tells us is that the North Korean leader, Kim Jong-un, is moving full speed ahead to build up a missile and nuclear capability. But I think it's important to recognize that for all of their bluster and all of their threats, 
The North Koreans, and I've been to North Korea 17 times since 1989 and have had a lot of chance to talk to them. The North Koreans feel themselves under threat from the United States and they see having a nuclear and missile capability as a way to ward off an attack from the United States. So at this stage of the game, I don't see the North Koreans for all of their uh, rhetoric as actually planning any kind of uh, offensive move against the United States. This is deterrence North Korea style. They want to convince the United States to lay off them. But of course the danger in this situation is that you have a cycle of escalation that could get out of control. Yeah, uh, I mean they're clearly looking for the leverage to escalate this and to increase their own ability to negotiate and to be a power player in the region, Laura, right? Yeah, I think Mike's absolutely right that what we're seeing from Pyongyang is not necessarily any kind of threat of offensive action. Um, it's certainly, though, I mean, the threat continues to grow. The capability of this program is a serious one. It's been on a deliberate track. Kim Jong accelerate progress. I worry about two things. Um, one is I really worry about the risk of miscalculation. As Mike was pointing out, um, I don't think that the North Koreans are looking to, to strike out. It's conflicts can start inadvertently because of some kind of miscommunication, yeah. a lack of clarity in statements. And I think that's why it's so important that we be coordinated with our allies and very, very clear in our words. And I also worry about the fact that you know, we need to have a whole of government approach, highly coordinated across all parts of the government. Very glad to see that that seems to be starting to happen. I, I worry about, um, about, you know, tweets that sometimes undercut what other members of the administration are saying. And I think that it's really mm. time to get serious about this. General Tater, do you worry about that? Well, I, I think the Trump administration has been employing a diplomatic information, military, economic campaign. I, that's what the last uh, couple of months have been all about. Uh, the statements, the tweets, the, the military flyovers, the economic sanctions, the d uh, front door and back door diplomacy, yeah. all of that has been synchronized better than I had ever seen it synchronized in, in the previous eight years. So I think that's going uh, just just fine. What, uh, what we've got to back up and look at, Martha, is that our national security strategy is really founded on two principles. One is an international order founded upon the rule of law and international law. And then uh, the, the stop to stop the proliferation of weapons of mass destruction. Those two things are the fundamental bedrock of our national security strategy. North Korea is in direct violation of both of them. And so that is why is standing so firm here when the Obama administration appeased North Korea that, you know, four of these nuclear tests took place on, on President Obama's yeah. watch. So now w what we've got is a nuclear capable North Korea, apparently, with, where they can put a hydrogen bomb on an intercontinental ballistic missile that can range the United States. That's unacceptable. And so what I would like to see is the beginning of a non-combatant evacuation from the Republic of Korea. Mm -hmm. I would like to see two carrier strike groups off the Korean Peninsula. I would like to see the 18th Airborne Corps with the 10th Mountain Division, 82nd Airborne Division, 101st uh, Airborne Division mm -hmm. uh, begin movement in that direction. I would like Got to it. see Marines uh, begin movement in that direction so that they know that we're serious. Yeah. And they it would know, do two it, things. It, it, it would yeah. put some teeth. Absolutely. So, yeah, uh, you're calling for just only have a minute. And I want to get get to get to these uh, other folks and just uh, as well. In terms of China, Mike Chinoy, um, where are they on all this? I mean, what what can we expect from them? They seem to think that this is more serious than it's been, um, but they don't really do anything about it ever. The Chinese are in a very uncomfortable position here. They don't like North Korea's nuclear program, but they are also. Uh, very afraid that too much pressure on North Korea could lead to regime collapse, uh, instability, uh, and so I don't think that the Chinese are, uh, are going to do much that is really going to change the calculation. And one of the problems here is that uh, even if sanctions hurt North Korea, there's very little evidence that sanctions alone are going to force Kim Jong-un to change his position. What yeah. the Chinese uh, keep asking for is some kind of, uh, of, of effort at diplomacy. And here, I, I think, as deterrence ramps up on the American side, it's time for President Trump to take a very bold step. I'd argue that he ought to send Defense Secretary Mattis to Pyongyang 
and tell Kim Jong-un directly what's at stake. This isn't negotiation. This is blunt talk wow. from the United States to see whether there's any possibility of diplomatic movement. If not, then the deterrence ramps up. Great points all. Thank you very much. Good to have you all here tonight. So also breaking tonight, another hurricane, and it is a big one, upgraded just an hour ago to a Category 4 now. So Florida Governor Rick Scott is declaring a preemptive state of emergency as Hurricane Irma barrels toward his state. That, as the death toll continues to rise in Texas, and the massive cleanup is just beginning, folks. Texas Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick joins me from Houston. Also, President Trump's DACA decision is looming. So what will he do? History shows he has been conflicted on this issue, to say the least. Watch this. We're going to deport children. Chuck, no, no. We're going to keep the families together. We have to keep the families together. But you're going to keep but them together. Have to go. But they have to go. But the DACA situation is a very, very, it's a very difficult thing for me. Because, you know, I love these kids. I, I love kids. I have kids and grandkids. Mm. Katrina Pearson and Richard Fowler with their sides of the story tonight. Plus a stunning decision in Penn State's hazing death case as the most serious charges are dropped against the fraternity brothers in the death of Timothy Piazza. The family's attorney responds in an exclusive interview only on the story tonight. And what's going on today? Uh, we have we have a, a friend who is unconscious. She hasn't moved. You see, it's cold. It's probably in that room. Mike and I are both veterans.